Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Conceive, believe, achieve. Shut the f*** up. <laughs> You're listening to Believe You Me with Michael the Count Bisbing. You know my name yet? And Anthony Lionheart Smith. What's going on, Jamal? Not much, man. Just in the, in the grind, in the mix of things, getting ready, bro. I was going to say, I mean, I've never seen anyone so unenthused about doing a podcast in my life. You look like you're here. Someone's got a gun to your head. Nah, nah, bro. <laughs> I'm in between workouts. You know how it is. You catch that nap and you're just chilling and stuff in between. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I know. And that's why I appreciate your time today. Obviously, one of the biggest fight cards to ever happen going down in just two weeks. You're the main event. I mean, it's incredible, Jamal, what you've achieved. It really is. Um, how's training camp going? Training camp is going great, man. I'm locking in. I'm rounding in the form and feeling great. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you're full of confidence as well. I saw your thing yesterday where, what did you say? Was it? Maybe he's overrated or he's he's not. He's I not never said he was overrated. Like that's the thing. I'm not like like I seen. I think I seen your your video the other video you put. Out. I'm not saying he's overrated, and I'm not saying that he's not that good. I'm just saying I'm really just that good. Yeah, that's yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm rightly so. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. I'm I'm just saying. I'm just I'm just that good. So he's beaten four UFC champs in seven fights. Three. Well, Strickland, Blahovich. Sean, Sean wasn't the champ when he beat him. Now that, and then not only that, you got to think of it like this: that version of Sean Strickland that he beat, Sean went through some other trials, some other fights, and some other growths before he became that champion. So I don't think it's fair to give him credit for beating that version of Sean Strickland. No, no, fair enough. As Teddy Atlas always says, when you become the champion, you kind of improve by about 30%. So, all right, fair enough. He's beaten three champions and he was a glory two weight division champion. So he's pretty good on the feet. So are you. You've got insane knockout power. If I was to bet $1,000 on Jamal Hill shooting a takedown, would I win that bet? I mean, I don't plan on shooting no takedown. <laughs> I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I'm not a wrestler. I'm not a double legger. Or single. I can do those things, but I don't see why I would need to. Yeah. No. I know. I know. I'm kidding around. Uh, so people out there are saying that Alex Pereira is going to knock you out. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel when you see this stuff? That people continually continue, double continue there to underestimate you. It's funny, bro. It's funny. It just makes me. It just makes me excited to go in and show what is show what's really up. Like I'll do the talking. I'll, I'll, you know, you know, I like that good. Do a little banter back and forth and things like that. But at the end of the day, I know we got to get in there. We got to get in there, and you got to act. He got to actually do it, and to actually do it, bro. That's good luck. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can't wait for it to happen. But that's what goes down in two weeks. Where are you right now? Where's training camp? I'm in Michigan right now. I'm in Grand Rapids. I've been, uh, I've been home here for doing, uh, doing training camp for. Last like three, four weeks. Nice. And who are you training with? Anyone we know? Um, same guys. It's been there's been a lot of uh, a lot of things in house. You know, I, um, I got I brought a I brought a couple of the uh, Michigan guys, a couple of Michigan guys. Just been in. Um, haven't really brought anybody in like like that. Yeah. No kickboxers. <laughs> I kickboxer come through. Uh, guy pretty good. Um, uh, yeah. I you guess. see that he was thinking about maybe fighting Tom Aspinall. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? Do you think this guy's just like tripping out on his own? No, I, I, I think I think that's probably is. He wants to challenge himself. You know, you know, uh, you know, it's just another another challenge or something that he wants to take. Like him, him actually winning it is another thing. But yeah, you got to somebody that wants to that that I don't look at people like, oh, you're crazy. Whatever they want to do, I just look at it like, damn, you he want to test his greatness. Mm, mm. Do you feel like, I mean, obviously, you beat Glover to show you became the champion of the world and you tire your Achilles, right? The division moves on, you come back, and now your main event, UFC 300. I don't know what the pay per view sales are going to be, but they're going to be big. You know what I mean? How does it feel to be headlining such a historic, monumental card? Uh, blessed, man. I feel blessed. Yeah, true. the bank account is going to be pretty blessed as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Come on, man. Come on, Mike. When that check clears, bro. You gotta take care. You know, you you know you gotta uh you gotta take care of the gotta take care of the, the family, man. Of course. Fun. Of course, yeah. When I fought George St. Pierre, you know, you get your initial bump. But those pay-per-view, when when you're part of a big pay-per-view, you, the big checks, they continue to come for quite some time. And then just when you think you've had it all, you get another one out of the blue and you're like, oh shit, because you don't get it all at once. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So you got a few happy days coming your way. Just when you think you've, it's all done, you're like, oh, shit, look at this, another one. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, outside of your fight, what uh, what fights are you looking forward to? I mean, do you even give a shit? Have you even looked at the card? Yeah, I'm excited about the whole card, man. I'm, I'm excited about the whole card. Thing is, uh, I usually like, Fight, like fight day for me is like pretty chill and I, I i like to get my rest so i like to take a nap and sleep before i go to the uh before i head out and before i go to the stadium it's gonna make it really really hard gonna make it really difficult with all these fights on this card because i want to see them all no i know yeah that, that's always the hardest thing as well fight day trying to take a nap because you know you got to do it you got to conserve your energy you know what i mean but i you go to the room you draw the curtains Sometimes sleeping isn't that easy. Or do you have no issue with that? No, nah, I don't have a problem. Yeah. I I'm good, man. Like I don't I don't like I don't get nervous. I don't really get nervous. I get anxious. I get anxious. I just I'm just ready to go. Like I get tired of waiting to get in there. It's almost like remember when you were like a kid, you had that field trip that you wanted to go on the next day? How you were that night before sleep that's how I feel. So I don't feel I'm not like nervous or like scared. That that I, I just man, I'm like like right now, bro. I, I want I just want to get in there. Like if they were like, yo, we'll lock y'all in the cage. We can y'all can go right now. I'm good to go right now. How how long will it have been? When did you win the title? Was it what day? Twenty first January twenty first, twenty twenty three. So it's been what? 16 months. No. Yeah, January to the following April. It's about 16 months. Your math a little off there, OG. No. January to January is 12. Ja- all right. January, January, March, April, all right, 15. January to March is 2. That's 14. February. Oh, shit. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever, whatever. Yeah. 14 months, whatever it is. Um, hey, look, you say look. ring rust is all in the head. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, it's just it's it's just all. I feel like that's just all the mindset you have. Like I've I've been in fights. I I I can think of every moment. I can think of every emotion that I felt walking into the cage from to getting comfortable and every getting set in and everything. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying? I I remember like like every every like like you know what I mean. So for me, I know how to just sum it up to. I know what what's at the end of it, right? I know what's at the end of. Of, of all of that is just what I do every day at the gym. Mm. I do this every day. I've been doing it. I've been fighting. I'm, I do this every day. So that's all I got to do. Just another day at the office. Assuming you get the job done, who would be next in line? Depends. Depends. What uh, do you think about Rakic and Yuri? That's what I'm saying. Like, um, I think if, I think if Yuri goes out and he knocks Rakic out in an impressive fashion, you know, gets uh, has a good performance. I still a fight that I want. You know, I, I still, I still, I still want that fight. But um, it's got to make sense. So, and I think if he, him going out and knocking out Rockage could make that make sense. Mm, yeah. As well as you know, um, just because, also just because of how he, you know, what I mean, how he lost the, how he lost the Alex fight. I don't feel that that he, I don't feel that he was given the respect of a champion to to battle through adversity and uh. And to keep to to you know what I mean to get his belt back, so yeah, bro. I I feel like his value is still there, and I feel a fight of that fight is still a great fight. And not him, a Magomed. Magomed's there. He's waiting. He's there. He'll wait. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm glad you brought that up. Actually, you know, because did you hear? I I don't know if this is true, but the rumor is apparently he's got a clause in the contract that if he gets through you unscathed, he's then going to fight at UFC 301 a few weeks later against Magomed Ankalaev. You must have seen this. 
I heard him say that. It's it's cat, bro. <laughs> They don't do causes like that. You know they don't. You wouldn't. But it's the first I've ever heard of one. Imagine telling Hunter or Dana, hey, put this in my contract. <laughs> you're right. I never <laughs> looked at it like that. They'd be like, bro, you're out of your f-ing mind. Right. Just go and win the fight. If you beat right. him handily, maybe. Right. They'll say that. Like, we'll see. Like, most of them will tell you, it's like, uh, we'll see what happens if you get through this. We'll see what happens. But yeah. come on, bro. They know he knows. You're right. Let's put a special clause in the contract. Yeah. They don't need a clause in the contract. If you get through it easy, you can just fight again. They'll do you a new contract. They don't need a clause. Yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. But there's no clauses. When have you ever had a clause in your contract? I don't outside know. Of, outside of this is what you're going to get paid, and then this is what you're going to get paid for baby. Outside of that, what other clauses have you had in the contract? Don't be a dickhead, which I broke that one quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, I'm, talk- I'm talking like, like I'm talking about for you, like for them, like oh, I'm getting this in this contract. It's yep. not, it's it's never happened. Money, pay per view points, tickets, airfare, that type of stuff. Outside of that, yeah, yeah, no, there's maybe some legal stuff, but you're right, you're right. When you put it like that, that's nonsense. But what did you think when you first heard that? Did you think the audacity of this man? Yeah, it was funny to me, bro. It was funny to me. And it's funny, like that, that how I can say, like, yeah, I feel like I can, I'm, I'm gonna knock him out. And it's like, oh, he's delusional, he's crazy, and all these things like that. But my man literally said he was gonna beat, he he, he was gonna beat me, and then turn around three weeks later and fight Magomed. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, which would be a terrible idea, anyway. Me and Anthony were talking about it on Monday. You don't want to do train for you one specific style and then go straight into Magomed Ankalaev. Three weeks later, potentially after a five round fight. Yeah. Magomed ain't gonna Magomed ain't gonna isn't gonna he's not gonna he's not gonna strike with you, bro. He's not gonna strike with you. He's gonna make you think he is, and then you're gonna be wrestling for your life the entire fight. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. What else has been going on? Still doing the YouTube stuff? Yeah, I, I kinda uh well, the studio that I use is, is back in Vegas, so so I've been kind of I've been kind of locked in, just just focus on training and getting ready. Yeah, no, I'm ain't focused. Just you know, just because it's been a long time off. Uh, yeah, and coming back from injury, you know, and things like that is just it's just better just to focus on just the work mm-hmm. okay. and all this, right. Make sure everything. Yeah, all, all that stuff is there whenever you want it. It's there afterwards. You know what I'm saying? I didn't start doing this shit till a few years ago. Um. Outside of your fight, uh, Jamal, do you keep up with the UFC scene, if you will, as a whole? Like, did you see that fight booking Hamza and Robert Whittaker yesterday? Fire. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, I do. Yeah, that's fire. I'm tapped in. I want to I see that. Hey, talk about turnarounds. Hey, I wouldn't mind fighting in Saudi Arabia. You know what I'm saying? A Maga man, a Maga man fighting Saudi Arabia. Me versus Maga man in Saudi Arabia wouldn't be bad. But that's a, I think that's like a, like a fight night or something like that. Yeah, but even still. I'm pretty sure one of them princes wouldn't mind. I was, I, I was going to say. Hey, y'all, look. They throw a number at me just like, hey, <laughs> to tell you, uh, look, we'll give you this for the pay. Hey, I'll pull up. Hey, sweet, <laughs> dreams, sweet Dreams is made to order, baby. Come on now. Sweet, like, these Sweet Dreams is made to order. Yeah, look, listen, if that. I'll drop them off. Yeah, if they're paying in Garnu, Fury, Anthony Joshua, all those crazy money, I'm sure they can stump up a nice little check from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for Jamal Sweet Dreams Hill to jump on a private jet, fly out to Saudi, handle your business. But there's no alcohol in Saudi. You wouldn't be able to party afterwards. I'm okay with that. I haven't drank in like New Year's. I don't like I'm I don't drink. I ain't been I ain't I'm good. I don't need to drink. Mm. No, of course, of course, you got a big fight coming up. Um, but when you do, what's the drink of choice? I like some tequila. Yeah, I like some tequila, and I like my bourbon too. I like my whiskey. I even like red wine, Jordan <laughs> red wine to be specific. Ilya, I need my wine, bro. Come on, man. I know you're taking your victory lap right now, man, but I, I still need that. Don't forget about your boy. What is he gonna send you some wine? Yeah, couple, yeah, couple, couple bottles of Georgia, Georgia's finest. Oh, nice. Yeah, because he got dual citizenship. I think Spain, man. Let me get, 
Let me. I, t- I, I, t- I take that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you think about Ilya? I mean, number one, he's amazing. He's incredible. What a superstar. He deserves all the success. But when he cuts weight, he drinks a liter of wine on the night of the weight cut. It's just a way for him to, you know what I mean, unwind and relax. Like, you know how you know how it is the night, the night after you wait, after you come away. It's hard to sleep, dude. It's mm-hmm. hard to sleep. It's hard to just just be in find that middle. I think that's what that is for him to help him find that that chill and that just that that way to get through the night, help himself sleep, things like that. And yeah. I'm pretty sure wine dehydrates you. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's during the wake up though. That's why he said he does it. He said because it does dehydrate you but you get a little buzz because i said to him you know in my uh hotel room or whatever wherever we were cutting weight it's miserable he said no no in my room we got the music playing everybody's dancing i was like shit i've been doing it wrong all this time you have mike you too damn serious i tell you this all the time you don't want to listen to me all right you got to relax you got to smile just hit just randomly just hit a dance move mike just randomly hit a just hit the michael jackson kick all right, that's a little goal. bit. That's your goal. I want five Michael Jackson kicks. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. This is what I the people it. want. The I champ fuck. belittling the former champ. This is what we need. <laughs> it's what I need from you, Mike. All right, it's, it's required. It'll, it'll, you'll feel great. All right, it's good for your hips. Okay, right. my it's hips it, are destroyed. It makes, feel, it makes you feel. And just find you find a happy song to listen to. What? If we had to pick a happy song for Jamal Hill, what's the happy song? Right now, I like the uh, Seven Years by Lucas Craig. Once seven. I was seven years oh, old. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mama told me. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I like that one. I like that one. Um, all right, well, listen, we don't want to keep you too much longer, but I could t- talk to you about music all day. I mean, I like this side of Jamal. It's just funny. We get off the fights. And you, you're like, you, you chill out a little bit. Do you get sick of talking <laughs> about the fucking the fight. Fight. It's just fighting just sounds like serious, crazy talk. Everybody, I just, I just like, yeah, it's just, it's, I think it's just the subject of how it is, you know, but even still, bro, I'm, I'm, I'm a real, I'm a really chill, like, like open-minded, carefree person. For yeah. The, like, I, I ain't gonna say too carefree, but. No. You know what I'm saying? But. I'm I'm I'll be chilling, bro. I'm just I just vibe. Good, nice. Uh, did you see Anthony uh, just booked his fight against Vitor Petrino? Who's Vitor Petrino? All right, yeah, he's undefeated Brazilian. He, he's he's on his way up. He's not ranked or anything, but he's dangerous. Okay. It might have been the dude that I seen at the PI not that long ago. He said he was a two hundred five er coming in. Big thick dude. I don't know. This dude wasn't that big. Oh. Yeah. No. No. Where's Harry, the, do we have any questions for the champ before we let him go? Where's the fight at? Where's where's that fight at? Oh, do you know? Oh, oh, UFC 301. Rio de Janeiro. Oh shit, I got a reason to go back to Rio. Oh, well, you got the king of, the king of Rio is gonna be on the card. Jose Aldo's returning. I'll let I I love Jose. No disrespect to Jose. He was the original King of Rio. That's the new King of Rio. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. That's where you beat Glover. I'm honorarily Brazilian, man. All right? Those are my people as well. The King of Rio, though, he's got a following. Jose Aldo will leg kick the shit out of you, Jamal. What make y'all think I can't do leg kicks, too? <laughs> All right? Don't act like nobody likes getting leg kicked. Like, literally, nobody likes to get leg kicked. And no. everybody leg kicked. Nobody wants to get leg kicked. What do you think about Pereira's leg kicks, though? Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. Harrington, <laughs> are you there? I don't uh, think he is. I am. Uh, my camera's having a bit of an issue. There we go. Oh, um, so I do have a couple of questions for you from the uh, believers here, Jamal. Uh, Matt McHugh wants to know, uh, did you honestly think you'd be on the top of UFC 300? There were so many rumors about it, and he's wondering if when you got the call, you were a little bit shocked. A thousand percent I was. No, I wasn't expecting to be on you, uh, to be on it because for, uh, yeah, the talks were, the UFC 301 were the talks at the time. Mm, nice. So I got the phone call. 
Okay, well, listen, my producer Harrington there is, I don't know, what are you doing, Harrington? Are you coming in or are you coming out? You no, doing? yeah, just, I thought you were telling me to, to kindly piss off. Um, no, never. I okay. Would, uh, well, per- piss off. I, I got one more. Uh, Bird carries, uh, he said, ask Hill about the chest tattoo. So is there an interesting story behind the chest tattoo? Um, man, that's actually funny because I was uh I was with my uh my chef. I you know my chef Ian is here. We were driving, we were riding through the old neighborhood, the uh for when I when I from where I first moved into Michigan when I first came to Grand Rapids. And uh yeah, that's what it is. The thumbs up. Like so it's from it's the north side. The north side I grew up on the north side here. And that's what we do from the north side, it's thumbs up for the north. And, oh nice, nice. Uh Chef, what was his name again? Chef Gary. Chef Ian Gary. Oh, uh, Chef, Chef. Uh, what the? <laughs> no, no, what did you Ian say? Larios. He just. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Gary, right? Yeah. What is the uh, Chef Gary speciality? Because when you're in training camp and you're trying to slim down, and you were a big old boy for a little bit there, Jamal, but it sounds like the weight's going good. You got the personal chef. Life is good. You're the champion of the world. You you're know playing. what? I, I, I was going to go, go, go save this, Mike. I was going to save this, but I'm gonna think, I, I think I'm going to get this for the. For the believe you mirrors. Let's right. do it. Let Six pack. Let him let him see. Let him see what it's like. Oh, let's go. Ugh. Ugh. Hey, yo, we not we not little no more. We not Ooh. we not fat. You're not fat. You look good, brother. You look good. That's a better angle though. A second ago, the up angle that th- wasn't doing the bellies any favor. <laughs> Ah, look at that shit. It's just the way it's built right there. It's one I, thought. I never want to see that thought. ever again. It's, oh, yeah. Whoa, hey, yo, yeah. That was crazy. No. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. Hey, what's the chef knocking up? What, what, what is the uh, the go-to meal from the chef? There's no go-to, man. He versatile. Versatile. Okay. Like, well, what's... I like a, no, the go-to meal for me, honestly. He makes this Peruvian dish that I like. Um, I keep forgetting what it's called, but uh, it's really, really good. And I like that. All right. All right. Well, listen, I'll let you get back to the training, the Peruvian food, the 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 the, the, the flexing, the biceps, the lot. Hey, Jamal, thanks for your time, man. I appreciate you, brother. Uh, I'll see you there in Vegas in a couple of weeks. Yes, sir. See you. All right, man. Take care. All right. There he is, the champ, Jamal Sweet Dreams Hill, uh, giving us. Quite the perspective there, you know what I mean? Look, taking his top off. Uh, uh, from the up angle, <laughs> I thought to myself, I thought, you don't look in the best shape, but when it brought it up, it all looks different. It's all in the angles. It's all in the perspective. That's why I look like shit today, because I'm in a hotel, and my angles and perspectives are all over the place. Harrington, what is your excuse? Uh, I don't know, dude. I'm born this way. Really, I'm Lady <laughs> Gaga, dude. Baby, I'm born this way. Uh, welcome to the show, everybody, and a big thanks to the champ, Jamal Hill. Um He's rightly very confident. You know, he's that's what you've got to be like. You know, you can't look at somebody like Alex Pereira and uh, you've, you've got to respect, you've got to respect, you know, what he's achieved in the sport, but also at the same time, you can't put them on a pedestal. You know what I'm saying? So I look forward to that one. Very, very excited. I am currently in New Jersey, uh, sorry, Atlantic City, New Jersey for the fights this weekend. I uh, got here late last night, two o'clock in the morning. I was just saying that. Uh, the the guy that picked me up from the airport, it's about an hour's drive to uh, Atlantic City, as you probably know, Harrison, being kind of from the area. The driver was a very nice guy, very nice guy, very chatty, considering it was like one o'clock in the morning and I was exhausted and I'd taken two flights. Uh, but he was a lovely guy. And then he farted and it stunk out the entire car. It really, it was so bad. It was so bad and it lingered forever and I, I, in the end i had to put the window down <laughs> do you know what i mean because it was so bad but then it was clearly obvious because no one was talking about it you don't address it you've just <laughs> met the guy you don't go bro have you just farted do you know what i mean but when i put the window down uh, it was like it's clearly obvious what was going on then i put it back up and then i it's, it was still there i had to put it back down again so anyway there's the toughest thing going on in my life right now things are sweet um so we've got a few things to talk about. We had some big fight buckets. I don't know why I mentioned that. <laughs> anyway, there you go. There you go. We've all been there, though. It's bloody horrible. But it is a natural bodily function. But you try and do it not in public, right, Harrington? 
Yeah, but I mean, also, if I'm driving a car and I'm doing that, I discreetly put the window down and hope that the breaking of the seal of the window sound covers my fart. Well, I wasn't planning on having this conversation, but sometimes, <laughs> you know, you probably think you're safe to squeeze out a little cheeky one. Do you know what I mean? And it'll be fine. But often those ones, silent but deadly, you know what I mean? So anyway, swiftly moving on. Yesterday, Dana White announced Saudi Arabia, the one and only Hamza Chimiev will be returning against Robert Whittaker. The only possible matchup that we never discussed on Monday. We discussed <laughs> Sean versus Hamza. We discussed Sean versus Whittaker, but we never discussed Hamza versus Whittaker. Um, tremendous fight. Makes a lot of sense in the middleweight division. However, if I'm not mistaken, this will be the first five-round scheduled bout for Hamza Chimiev. Not first one scheduled, but probably the first one he's actually going to make it to. Because remember, he was scheduled for a main event against Nate Diaz and then missed yeah. it by about 10 pounds or so. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. But so the first five round fight that he's been in, um, which automatically, if you're in the corner of Hamzat Chimiev, you've got to be concerned. One thing Robert Whittaker is not going to do is run out of gas. He's very, very experienced, fighting at the highest level for the long time. Uh, without getting into the X's and O's, the, the, the obvious thing is Hamzat always gasses. He's a tremendous force of nature. I mean, the way he takes people down and dominates them right from the opening bell. I mean, he did the same thing against Kamara Usman. Granted, didn't get the finish, but he definitely did slow down against Gilbert Burns. Same thing. He, he had a great round one. Two and three were kind of close. Uh, five rounds against somebody like Robert Whittaker. If he can't finish him early, that could be uh, that could be a disastrous night for him in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, Ben, that was my that was my initial thought too. But then what immediately popped into my head after is like if Robert Whitaker gets beaten, typically, you know, it's in like that first round, right? That 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 first second round. I mean, obviously we saw like Yoel hit him with with, you know, thunder and and, and dropped him and Whitaker was able to recover and, and win that fight. But um, I mean, in the Izzy fight, it was an early knockout, the DDP fight, early knockout. So it's like he is a little susceptible to these super fast starters, you know, who who are willing to to put their the, the pedal to the metal. And it's like if you're going to do it against anyone, Robert Whitaker makes the most sense because, you know, over 25 minutes, he's probably going to find a way to, to 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 gain the upper hand and win that fight. So empty the gas tank early and hope for the best. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you were kind of a conspiracy theorist, you could make it both ways. You could say, well, they've made this fight so Robert Whittaker can win <laughs> because, you know, he can't go five rounds. But then on the flip side, you can make it, well, they've made this fight in Saudi Arabia because Hamzat's Muslim. And in the first round or two, Robert Whittaker is susceptible and no one's as dominant early as Hamzat Chimeyev. The reality is it's a bloody fight and anything can happen. And it's a good fight. It's a very, very good fight. Some other fights on that card as well, right, Harrington? Uh, yeah, we have uh, uh, Ihor, no, um, e yes, uh, fighting. Um, well, sorry, we got Sergey Pavlovich versus Alexander Volkov. Should uh, we just do that little bit again? Please, please, <laughs> dude. I'm I did that bit out, bro. Um, uh, if you don't mind, buddy. Um, so yeah, so that's the main event, but what else have we got on that card, Harrington? Uh, Sergey Pavlovich uh, versus Alexander Volkov. A uh, nice little heavyweight scrap there. Uh, Kelvin Gastelum versus Daniel Rodriguez. Johnny Walker versus Volkan Uzdemir. And Shara Bullet uh, versus Ihor Pataria. Mr. One Eye Pirates himself. That's a hell of a card, dude. No, that is a stacked fight night. No, it really is. It really is. And Jamal Hill, you never know. Him versus Magomed Ankalaev. They could happen on there as well. All right, today's episode is sponsored by Mando Whole Body Deodorant, and that is here to fix your problem if you are a bit of a smelly one, okay? If you're suffering from BO, okay, nobody wants that. Nobody wants to smell that, okay? And I feel for you. I do. And a lot of uh, deodorants out there, they just mask it. They don't fix the root problem. They just mask the symptoms, okay? But your body still is pumping guard all of that, pumping out all that body odor. Okay, well, the whole body deodorant from Mando is safe to use anywhere on your body and it is clinically proven to stop odor for 72 hours because it was created by a doctor who saw firsthand how normal body odor was being misdiagnosed and mis. Treated as I say, some deodorants they just try and mask the odor with the fragrance. Well, Mando is formulated and powered by mandelic acid, which actually stops the odor being created, which stops it being made before it even starts. Okay, it's like a pre 
odorants okay so mando whole body deodorant this stuff is all natural 100 it is organic it is fragrance oil free it is dermatologist tested and it smells fantastic There's a bunch of different varieties there for you so if you've got a problem with body odor Take control today with Mando. Stop the creation of that order for up to 72 hours, okay? So right now, go to shopmando.com and use the code BELIEVE to get $5 off your starter pack, which is equivalent to 40% off. One more time, shopmando.com. The code is BISPING for $5 off the starter pack. That is over 40% off. Anyway, so that's... Uh... UFC Saudi Arabia. I'll be there. I just got the email today to book my flight details. So looking forward to that one. That's a great fight card. Also, Dana just announced that the fact that the UK has two champions now, they will be coming back to the UK. My question is, who goes top of the bill, right? Because you got to think if Tom and Leon are going to be on the same card, right? One's an undisputed champion. One's an interim champion. But one's a heavyweight right? But they're both rematches. If it is Bilal versus Leon, and we don't know if it is going to be that, but you know, Bilal is going to go mental if he doesn't get that title fight, but it is a rematch. Tom versus um, Curtis Blades. That's also a rematch. So if you were the matchmaker, Harrington, and I can't believe I'm even asking this question, but if you were the matchmaker, who you put in main event? I mean, I think there is no better cherry on top to the disrespecting Bilal Muhammad Sunday uh, than putting him in the co-main event when he finally gets his title shot. Stick him on the prelims. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. No, but all jokes aside, you put, I, I think Leon being undisputed, he's got to go there. And Tom is the interim. You know what I mean? Okay. I mean, I, on the flip side, though, as you said, one is a heavyweight. And it's like, you know, at the end of the day, when you're talking about what that fight poster is going to look like, when you're trying to sell out, you know, the, the O2 arena or, or wherever, whatever big arena they're doing this in, having Tom Aspinall opposite somebody the size of Curtis Blades visually is just going to do a better job of selling that fight, despite Leon having the, the undisputed title. Yeah, but number one, it doesn't matter on a poster. You can make Leon look bigger than Tom if you wanted to. You know, that's why people think that Conor McGregor is gigantic. I keep having <laughs> to remind them when I speak. I spoke to some guy on the plane last night. He said, he's big. I said, he might, he's a bit bigger these days. I said, he's not big per se. The man's five foot eight. Do you know what I mean? Um, but in terms of selling out whatever stadium it's going to be, Tom versus Curtis Blades has already happened. It's already happened in the UK. So regardless, listen, it's two tremendous fights. Two tremendous fights indeed. What else is going on in the world of mixed martial arts, Hamilton? What have we got before we get to a non-MMA story? Uh, so big fight booking, or not by, by booking, but announcement. Uh, remember the UFC signed that deal with Perth, uh, Australia last year. They're going to bring like a certain number of cards over a certain amount of time over there. And they've announced they're going to this year in August, UFC 305. Uh, and the rumors are heavy already uh, that that is going to be Drikas Duplessis versus Israel outside. Yeah. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? You know what I mean? Drikas has got to defend the belt, won it in January. So what would that be? August, that'd be seven months in between. It's about time. You know what I mean? The only person then out of the, the top five, if you will, that isn't booked is Sean Strickland. Hamza Whitaker, Drikas, Sean, uh, sorry, Drikas, Izzy. Sean's probably going to get a matchup soon, but... Uh, that's awesome. I'm kind of. I was gutted when I saw that because uh, I've got Australian family. Mm -hmm. I've got one of my best friends in the whole world. Jack all lives in Perth. I was like a free trip to Perth to see friends and family, but no, I won't be calling that one. Sadly, you know, kind of have it all your own way. Uh, Izzy versus Drickers. That's an interesting one as well. Yeah, I mean that is like you know the, for for all the talk and and everything. Like they're really they did a good job of selling me that fight. Right. Like when 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 Izzy and, and Drickus were in the cage opposite each other and talking, you know, some some pretty colorful language, be, be that what it will. I'm sold on that fight. I genuinely do believe there's bad blood there. And I don't think there's bad blood between Drickus and anybody else in that division. So, yeah, give me all that you can get. Yeah, well, there, there might be bad blood between Sean, Sean and uh, Drickus now as well. Okay. You know, I feel like they buried the hatchet on that. No, I don't know. Well, they, well, they, they buried the hatchet. They had the fight. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, Sean started like complaining that he thought he won the fight, and then Drake has said on his Instagram, responded to, "Why don't you cry about it again?" <laughs> Did all the way, which which was a very very good comeback. If you want to go there, if you want to talk shit, if you want to live by the sword and die by the sword, dick to dick, nipple to nipple, then that's what you get. 
fair play. Speaking of Sean Strickland, who's mm-hmm. been talking about him recently? I saw you put something Colby in the Covington. note here. Covington, tell the people, what has he been saying? Because I never saw this. Yeah, I mean, I this was a, a shocker to me. Colby Covington, uh, he was doing an interview, um, and he was talking about, you know, just generally the the, the state of things. Uh, and he said he had some pretty choice words about Sean Strickland. said he couldn't hang at 170, he kept getting knocked out. Um, and he has so much. I mean, do you want to just play the clip? Yeah, let's wash out my stuff. division. He got he couldn't handle it. My division. He got beat up, knocked out. You know, so he had to leave divisions because he couldn't cut it. So you know, I think he's a bum. He's been hit in the head too many times. He's got CTE. So straight up, yeah, straight up. Anything that guy says, you, you can't follow along. That guy's gonna end up literally probably killing someone someday. He's under investigation right now in Vegas. Some drunk uh, guy was wandering the streets in Las Vegas, like near his home. He goes outside the home, pistol whips the dude in the middle of the street. And so he's under like cr- crazy investigation in, in Vegas right now. He's going to be going to court. So wow. we're really going to take that guy's opinion on something. Really? Hey. Well, well, I think the uh, incident that he's talking about is probably the one that we all saw where the guy, what did he do? He'd beaten up his wife or something like that. And then was running down the street. Sean goes out. I didn't see him pistol whip him, but I did see him pull the gun out. So um, who knows about that? But <laughs> for Colby to say that he couldn't hack it in the division. All right, granted. Granted, he wasn't at the top of the food chain, if you will, at the welterweight division, but he moved up. Because I remember Sean Strickland when I used to train with him years ago at Mark Munoz's place. I forget. He was fighting at middleweight initially. And then he said, you guys are all monsters. You're too big. I'm going down to 170. And I thought, Sean, you're out of your mind. 170. You're about the same size as me, give or take, you know. And then, But he did it. He made 170 multiple times. And I would see him in the gym. And he would be walking around like he had a very, very serious illness. He was so skinny, you know what I mean? So it's not surprising that he got caught by the lights. I think it was Elise Zaleski Dos Santos right, that caught him with a spinning wheel kick, you know what I mean? When you're cutting that much weight, you can't take a shot, like I always say. But, you know, Sean Stru- uh, sorry, uh, Colby Covington is going to Colby Covington. So I think he might be talking out of his ass there. Who knows? That remains to be seen. And one last bit of news in the fight announcements before we move on to whatever dubious story Harrington has concocted for us. Darren Till, the gorilla, right? A lot of people say that I'm misguided or misjudged when it comes to my confidence in Darren Till. I still say Darren Till, if he came back, ooh, you're going to come for me, could come back and become a champion in the UFC. That is the kind of ability that this man has. Uh, remember when he fought Drickus Duplessis? He had Drickus on the back foot for a while. Granted, he got finished. Granted, he didn't start well, but I think it was round two or three. Before he got finished, he was doing very, very well against yeah, head, Heading into that third round, Darren Till was like a minus 400 favorite on the live line with the boogies. With the boogies. Like, he was supposed to win that fight after round two. There you go. There you go. Thank you very much. So anyway, rumors have come out that he's going to be fighting none other than the boxing extraordinaire... Uh, extraordinaire boxer, whatever it is, the bloody wannabe, the jumping Jack Flash doer in the middle of a fight, the one and only KSI. The reason I say jumping Jack Flash, remember he was doing jumping jacks when he was mm-hmm. fighting Tyson Fury and then launching in. Uh, not a technique I've seen before. And hopefully not one I'll see again. Hey, man, uh, you trained the guy. <laughs> I did train the guy. He's a nice guy. He's a nice guy, KSI. He's all right. I've got nothing against him. But that, that fight against Tommy Fury was bullshit. Uh, he lost that. And we don't know if this is true, but the rumors are Darren Till, KSI, July, venue yet to be announced. I'm telling you right now, Darren Till will murder KSI. No offense to KSI, as I just said, nice guy. Darren Till will absolutely destroy this man. But more importantly, I'm happy for Darren. It's good to see that hopefully this comes off. He'll be making some decent money. It'll give him something to train for, get back in the gym, remind the world of how good he is and what the man is capable of. So all the best to him for him there. Um, Harrington, you put something in the notes about Ozempic. Now, for anyone that doesn't know, Ozempic (laughs) is this life-changing drug that is uh, causing people to lose a lot of weight. Okay? And it works. It really does work. I see people, I hear about the, uh, the results all the time. It's advertised on TV nonstop in America, I see. But uh, what is this latest iteration, if you will? Uh, so some people are really into the effects of Ozempic without uh, the, you know, getting shots and, and going to doctors, getting prescriptions, uh, the loss of buccal fat that comes with it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so they are uh, they've come up with like an alternative, right? Uh, it's a TikTok trend. It's being called Oat Zempic. 
Uh, the idea is you take instant oats, uh, you mix it up with some water and some freshly squeezed lime juice, and you drink that. And that, uh, just like Ozempic, will lower your A1C and lead to significant weight loss. One woman claimed 40 pounds, and I believe it was like two months or something like that. Yeah, so... So are they telling us that you don't need to take experimental drugs to lose weight and all you have to do is watch what you eat? Weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Who would have thunk it? You know what I mean? Um, I don't think that by... That, that's essentially porridge, what we call it in the UK, oats with water, right? For a lot of carbs. A lot of carbs in that. I would not listen to this latest TikTok challenge. If you want to lose weight at a ridiculous fashion and you don't want to be disciplined, get on the bloody old Zempic if you can get it. I just saw, speaking of diets, you might have saw this, Brian, just Google this. They're saying now that intermittent fasting, doing the eight hours of eating window and then the 16 hours of fasting has been linked to a massive increase in heart disease. Yeah. Did you see this? I mean, that's, I've, I've known that. <laughs> It's bullshit. No. Intermittent fasting will cause heart disease. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, I've just heard from, you know, for, for, for years, the one downside of intermittent fasting, it's bad for long-term heart health. That is, uh, uh, and what are you basing that on? Because I'm going to, listen, I'm no heart scientist, as right. we know, but that is bullshit. But that is absolute, number one, an eight-hour window, that is a long enough window. Right. That is, let's just say you had your first meal at 12 o'clock. That's having your last one at eight. Let's say you had your first one at nine. That's having your last one at five. Okay. Breakfast at nine, lunch at 12, dinner at five. You're telling me that's going to give you heart disease. And then let's go back to when man evolved. Right. And food was not as uh, plentiful. You couldn't just go to your fridge or a drawer. You couldn't walk into a 7 Eleven or a gas station and buy some shit. Okay. Buy some processed food, buy some chips buy some sodas, buy stuff that's going to really give you heart disease, okay, right? We were fine then. There was no heart disease back then. Maybe there was, but not like now, okay? This is a bullshit scheme, and I'm sounding like Brian to, to get people to continue eating more shit, more food, and, and contribute to the medical industry because guess what? Eating less food in this modern day and age it should be mandated almost. I don't mean mandated, but we all overindulge. It's as simple as that. We consume far too many calories. Well, it I is would say that this is one of those correlation is not causation situations, right? <laughs> like, just because pe people are fasting, we're not looking at any other uh, outliers in their diets or in their <laughs> lifestyle for them to be like, this is the thing that's causing a 91% increase in heart disease. It's just, it's like scientific illiteracy to... No, of course. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like my brother, Adam. He's a, what is he, a data anal analyst, yeah. data analyst or something for the army. I said, what do you do? He said, oh, yeah. And he said, basically, you know, he collects a lot of data. He said, but you've got to be careful because it, it can be skewed very, very easily. Just by you just thoughts. take it from a certain subsect of people. Yeah. Let's analyze what they're doing. You know, so we'll take a bunch of people that are intermittent fasting, but they're also smoking 20 cigarettes a day. Amongst those people, but well, there's an increase in heart disease. It's bullshit. You know How is eating less food going to be bad for your heart? Harrington, you are, you, you, you are defending this movement. Explain. Just I know you're not a, a doctor, but why were you initially inclined to believe that this will be true? Because I've, I've watched like a decent amount of YouTube videos on the subject, which I feel like is everybody's public university at this point. Sure, sure. And no, I, I, I have heard um, I have heard like actual cardiologists come on and say that. Right. Because it's like you 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 don't have blood, you know, pumping in your stomach to, to, to be dealing with like the breakup of the food. Um, and then all of a sudden you have all like you, you take in all your food in this short window and your heart is asked to, you know, do the do the job to pump pump that much blood out to, to, to get it sorted and and moving throughout your system. And then it goes dormant again instead of it like, you know, continuously working, you're, you're shutting it off and turning it back on a lot. Yeah, well, I mean, that's interesting. And I haven't seen that video, but I have seen some videos. Dr. Eric Berg, I think he's one of them that I watch quite a lot. He's a very, very skilled guy. Certainly doesn't seem to have an agenda of any kind. And he talks about intermittent fasting and the benefits of it. And generally what people say, and this is, seems to be uh, the general consensus against people that are skilled and knowledgeable in this area, which, of course, me and you are not. We are just regurgitating things we've heard. Mm -hmm. Um 
from learned people, to be fair, um, is that when you're not breaking down food in your stomach, the body can then do other things. And that's why it's absolutely crucial in uh, battling potentially cancerous cells, you know, because when you're not breaking down food, the body can do other things. But of course, that's why cancer is booming. This is one of the reasons or one of the hypotheses, uh, hypothesi, hypotheses, hypotheses uh, is one of them. Um is that we're always eating, we're always consuming, and the body's just always breaking down food and therefore can't contain all the free radicals in the system. Very sciencey. And you know what? Honestly, I would choose heart disease over cancer any day of the week, right? Like, <laughs> you going out like a like a badass, just your heart just stopping in the middle of you, like, I don't know, whatever, walking the kid to the park, who cares? That's the way to go. A long, drawn-out battle with cancer? Nightmare. No, well, well, cancer, I mean, it's not good. It's not good. My dad had a quintuplet heart bypass. Five bypasses. You know what I mean? Uh, he, he's he's had a bad heart over the years. I remember when he, I was about 10, I came home from school. He had his first heart attack and I was starving and there was no one in the house. And I asked someone from school, I said, can you lend me 20 p so I can buy a chocolate bar? And they went, get your heart. I said, oh, come on, my dad's had a heart attack. And they were like, you'll say anything to buy a 20 p. I'm like, <laughs> he's in a bloody hospital. He's had a heart attack. And then years later, he had a quintuplet heart bypass. And it's crazy. That's where they, you know, they basically use a chainsaw, if you will, cut open the chest, pull the rib cage apart. It's just wild what they can do. Yeah. So I don't know. Heart disease isn't to, isn't to be laughed at. And if you want to take medical advice, don't take it from Harrington and don't take it from me. <laughs> uh, we are just regurgitating YouTube videos, but eat less, work out, exercise, have a balanced diet. Don't just have loads of oatmeal with water and whatever else it said on TikTok, right? Probably don't take Ozempic and any of these drugs. Try and be drug-free. But exercise, that's the main one. When's the, do you, when's the last time you worked out, Harrington? Mm, probably right before my last fight. <laughs> Okay. Like that is that's that's the reason I keep I keep agreeing to do these because it's like oh then I know I have to go to the gym. Yeah, but how about just go for a run instead? How about just go for it? I I feel anxious if I don't work out that day. Really? Yeah, I do. Yeah, because it clears my head. I like to start my. I have my coffee in my morning, then I've got to go for a run or some form of cardio, whether it's the stationary bike. I said Peloton back a few times recently. I saw people in the comments going, Bispin keeps promoting Peloton. <laughs> I'm not promoting Peloton, but I've got one. So I call it a Peloton bike. If you want to, if you want me to call it exercise bike or a stationary bike, I will do that. But still, I do I'd that now. Lift. Hmm? I said I'd prefer it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm calling it Peloton all the time. Today's episode is sponsored by Shopify, which is the e-commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. So whatever it is that you're selling, whatever your business is, you want to be online and you want to do it cost efficient. Now, thinking about starting a website, building a website, paying somebody for the website, then being able to take payments online, that all sounds very, very time consuming complicated and not to mention expensive. Well, not anymore. Not with Shopify. Shopify makes it extremely easy. Instantly, you can sell across all social media marketplaces like TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. It's packed with industry-leading tools ready to ignite your growth. Shopify gives you complete control over your business and your brand without having to learn any new skills in design or code. And by the way, there is a 24-7 help and an extensive business library course available to you as well. Shopify is there to support your success every single step of the way. So listen, if you're not online, you've got to get serious about your business today and you've got to do it with Shopify. As I say, it is extremely easy Right, and it's extremely cheap. Time to get serious, guys. Sign up for one dollar per month for a trial period at Shopify.com slash believe. That is one dollar per month for a trial period at Shopify.com slash believe, all lowercase. As I say, take your business to the next level, start selling to the entire world online. Do it for one dollar per month at Shopify.com. Slash believe. Anyway, right. So, what else is going on? So, uh, Colby Covington wasn't just speaking about uh, Sean Strickland. He was talking about Ian Gary as well, right? Uh, so, Colby Covington said uh, because Ian Gary hasn't met any of the three stipulations that he put out in that initial video, Colby Covington has no reason to go down the rankings to fight Ian Gary. So, I guess until he does those things, that fight's not happening. Yeah, I mean, look, listen. At the end of the day, 
I mean, Colby Covington has got some work to do, right? To be, to be fair, you know, regardless whether or not, I mean, number one, Ian's not going to adhere to those stipulations. Those stipulations are ridiculous. Ian came back with his own stipulations as well, which was kind of silly. Let's just be honest. I think as a fan, we probably all want to see those matchups, but you know what I mean? There's this whole refusing to, refusing to fight somebody below you. You know, you can't, that, that, that's, that can't be the way. If everybody said that, if everybody stuck to their guns and said, I'm not fighting somebody ranked below me, then we're going to struggle to see any fights happen. That's just the way it goes. I mean, look at the champion. The champion technically is always fighting somebody that's ranked <laughs> below him. You know, we had it uh, for a while. There was Justin Gagey and Dustin Poirier and some of the top of the lightweight division. There was people saying that they're just kind of going round and round in circles. Of course, Justin Gagey proved his worth against Rafael Fazeev. Poirier just did it against Benoit Saint-Denis. So sometimes you you gotta you gotta fight beneath you, so to speak. And I use that term loosely because it keeps you busy, it keeps you active, it keeps you generating income, which is predominantly why we all do this. You know, I understand we want to be champions. When you when you sign with the UFC, you should be thinking, you know, title aspirations. When you get on a win streak, like like Ian Gary is right now, you know, you should then start to think, hold on a minute, this these title aspirations are real. You know what I mean? I'm backing it up. I'm doing big things. He should be looking for Colby Covington. Colby should be looking for redemption against another big star like Ian Gary. And to be honest, the fact that them two aren't fighting, as I've said before, I find kind of crazy. But Ian Gary's doing the same thing to MVP. We spoke about this on Monday. You know what I mean? You can't just pick and choose your battles. I mean, who is, I mean, to be honest, in the, uh, the welterweight division, who is there? You got Leon's the champ. Then you got Kamaru. Um, Commercial, Who I think is right? going to be at 185, no? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's still ranked number one. Bilal's probably taken. Sharp Jack. I don't think he's by Jack De La Madalena. There's Colby. Then there's Jack. Then there's Gilbert. And then there's Ian. You know what I'm saying? So they're, they're kind of running out of potential matchups. But, you know, regardless, regardless. And it's like, I mean, if uh, Ian Gary, to be fair, he's on the win streak, right? Like, he is, he is on the ascension. So he probably shouldn't be fighting back in the rankings. Colby Covington has now lost what two in a row or or two out of his last two, something like that. He is he is not in a position where he can negotiate and say I'm not fighting down the down the line. You are the you're in the position where you need to fight down the line or else you're just going to get leapfrog for your spot anyway. Yeah, I mean if you just forget about Colby Covington and the Gary, I mean if if they don't fight each other, Ian Gary, who's he going to fight? It's either Jack Della Madalena or Gilbert Burns or Shavkat Rachmanov. You know what I'm saying? Any one of those three, they're all very, very serious, tough matchups. But to be fair, you know, to each one of those guys, that could be an unofficial number one contender matchup. Granted, uh, Gilbert just lost, right? He, yeah. he lost to Jack De La Madalena, so he would be out of the contention anytime soon. But Shavkat Rachmanov, Jack De La Madalena, Andy and Gary, I think it, whoever wins, or just one more win for either one of them, whoever wins between Bilal and Leon, you got to think, that that's probably that they're, they're probably next next in line for a shot at the belt. And, I, and speak, speaking of fighting down in the rankings, go on. What were you going to say? I was going to say I think that's why Jack made the call out of Shafcock because it's like then that kind of eliminates any kind of question marks. These are two of the top three guys in the division. We actually fought each other. I came out on top. I must be the number one contender now. Yeah, and that's why you got to respect Jack Della Madalena. Do you know what I mean? Nobody's calling out Shafcock Rachmanov. In fact, did you see speaking of Shafcock? He put a little. Uh, a little uh, reel out on Instagram recently, and it showed. But what was it? Was it Shavkat? Because this doesn't seem like his style. But he put a little clip out, and it showed Ian Gary backing up against Jeff Neal, and then it cuts to Jeff Neal, Shavkat, and Shavkat just having you know he he had if it was him, it was edited well to show you know a lot of the big moments, finishing him, kneeing him, elbowing him, but going forward, advancing, being the aggressor, you know. Um, but yeah, Jack Della Madalena calling him out. I mean, that guy's a real one. Speaking of fighting down in the rankings as well this weekend, obviously I'm here in Atlantic City, which I'll be honest, I I, I am sorry if anyone lives here in Atlantic City. <laughs> I'm not impressed so far. <laughs> Dude, I thought you were going to be like, oh man, I'm blown away by how cool it is. And I was going to roll my eyes, man. That no, place is no, not no, great. I'm not impressed. I mean, number one, the Uber, not the Uber driver, the car driver, 
farted on the way over, so my experience didn't didn't get off to a good start. I got here late at night. I was starving. I ordered some DoorDash. That took forever. I sat at the hotel bar waiting for the DoorDash to come. I thought I timed it perfectly when I check in to the DoorDash turning up. I had to wait for about 15 minutes at the bar, and uh, which was right by the front desk. Jesus Christ. Pretty ghetto. Do you know what I mean? It, it, was, it was rowdy. It was loud. There was a lot of ladies of the night. I think I was fielded for business about mm-hmm. three times. I'm like, no, I'm fine. Thank you very much. Leave me alone. Uh, yeah, it's it's not, it's grim. It's pouring down. You look out my, my window, I can see the ocean, but you can't see any actual water because it's just gray, rainy, cold, shitty. But I'm sure, I'm sure I'm going to have a great time tonight. <laughs> uh, anyway, speaking of which, co-main event and, and fighting down in the rankings, Luke, he's fighting Joaquin Buckley. You know, that's what made me think of this. Joaquin Buckley is a great fighter, but he's not yet ranked. Vincent Luque was supposed to fight Sean Brady. Sean Brady got injured. And uh, Luque is just like, I need an opponent. I want to fight. I'll take on whoever. I will prove my spot, prove my worth. And he's taking on Joaquin Buckley. And I'll tell you what, I like Buckley. He came into the fight meetings today. Joaquin Buckley, he's got all the potential to be a real superstar, that guy. I mean, he went viral for that knockout of Impa Kasanganai, which was unbelievable. Um, he's got a great personality. And, you know, up until kind of recently, he was training by himself. He said, I was training outside. And I thought he, I thought he meant like outside of the clique, outside of like the MMA people. Do you know what I said? What do you mean training outside, like outside with, with outsiders? He said, not outside. I said, what do you mean outside? He said, outside, like at the park in a field. I was training in a park or in a field. I'm like, you weren't training in the gym? He's like, no, not until a couple of years ago. I was like, like, holy shit. Like with a coach or you were just doing just, pull-ups in the park? Just shadow boxing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, and then I tell you what, here's a good talking point for this weekend. Chris Weidman. Chris Weidman's fighting Bruno Silva. Chris Weidman, what a legendary career he had. Beating Anderson Silva, not once but twice. Okay, weird scenario with both of them. Defends the bell, I think, three times. He was the Brazilian killer. Beat Loyoto Machida, beat Vitor Belfour. I think there was a third one as well. Was it Maya? No, but regardless, when he beat Vitor Belfour, that wasn't the roided up version of beat Vitor Belfour, by the way. That was oh. a used teabag version of Vitor Belfour. Who was the third? It was, well, it, w- it was Silva because he beat Silva and then defended ah. against him. Anderson Silva, uh, Vitor, and yeah, uh, Loyoto Machida. But he snaps his leg against Chris uh, Uriah Hall. Then when he comes back, he fights Brad Tavares last year. Breaks his good leg. Fractures his good leg when he fought Brad Tavares. So he thought he was done, but he's taking this fight. He's going to play it one step. If he loses, I believe there's a very good chance he's going to retire this weekend. He said he started his career here in Atlantic City back in the day. So this would be a nice place to retire. Um he said, I just won that moment. I thought I'd never fight again, but I won that moment where I get to put my gloves down. And I resonate with that. I understand that because I kind of wanted to do that. Even though my good eye was kind of messing up, I wanted to have that moment. Uh, but Bruno Silva is a dangerous opponent. He's got fantastic striking. Remember, you know, he's the guy that took Alex Pereira the distance. He's had some viral knockouts himself. He's got flying knees, et cetera, et cetera. He's also had some losses, but he's a dangerous guy for sure for Chris Wyman. Yeah, I mean, including the, uh, I think it was uh, uh, Shara Bullet uh, just got the the decision against him his last time out. He has had some, he's had some tough performances. It's funny you say that thing about Wyman, though, because I remember I was at the fight where he fought Gastelum in Long Island, uh, which is like, you know, I mean, that's the Sarah Longo's based out of there. And if anything, like, I had that same thought going into that. Like, if Chris Wyman loses this fight, he might just drop the gloves, middle of the octagon. Uh, you know, thanks, thanks to Long Island for all the memories. And now here we are, what, six, seven years later, and and, and we're still having that same conversation. So, you know, I have, I, you know, it's a tough fight, but it, I think Chris Weidman can turn the clock back one more time. I don't know if you saw, he was saying his team says that if he actually like committed to it and went for it and really pushed it, he could get to the top of the mountain again. Yeah, yeah. Look, listen, the, the, I want to agree with you. And I'm not saying he can't win this fight. I truly believe he can win this fight. Stylistically, I think it favors Chris. He's a tremendous wrestler. He's a big middleweight. I'm just trying to find something to just let we, let us everyone know. Hold on. Uh, 
Here we go, here we go. A little plug for Chris. I'm going to go to the gym in a minute in case you saw. I've got my shorts on. Um, what? Trinity Gold. This is Chris Weidman's uh, supplement company that he's launched. And it's Herbal Daily Supplements. He was telling me all about it, and this is how he's been able to train, he said. He said he hooked up with some Indian doctor that was giving him all that kind of natural supplements and whatnot. And he said his body just felt tremendous. All these aches and pains went away. And I'm like, hold on a minute. Hold on. Is this your company? He's like, yeah. I'm like, you're just giving us the sales pitch. And then he came <laughs> and gave us all samples. So anyway, there it is. I took some, actually. It's, uh, what is it? It's got all the usual suspects. Ashwagandha, Shavtavaran, Kavachi seed. Oh, it's got Kavachi seed? Fenugreek seed. Papali, Guiduchi, Sh- Sh- Shilajit, God, Kishura, and something. So there you go. If you want some, that sounds like a lot of mushrooms and a lot of goodness, to be honest. How's your anyway, neck feeling since you took it? That. What's that? How's your neck feeling since you took it? Well, I'll be honest. It's not too bad. My neck, I, I've been living in a lot of pain recently. This neck situation is driving me absolutely bloody crazy. I had the ablation and it's just got worse. It's just got worse. And funnily enough, when I was flying here yesterday, sat next to a guy, he had a neck ablation. And he's, the, he's got worse as well. And I was sp- spoke to my local GP, and he said, ablations don't work. They don't work. <laughs> anyway, whatever. We don't want to get into that. Uh, so uh, this fight card this weekend, Aaron Blanchfield, man on Fioro. Man on Fior. Man on Fior, top of the bill. That's a great fight. You got Fior, that's uh, a very, very good striker. Beautiful striking. And then on the flip side, Blanchfield, uh, very, very good at taking people down and submitting them. I can't give a prediction. Who do you think wins that one, Howard? Seeing as you love women's MMA. I do, and I love Aaron Blanchfield. She's from Fairlawn, New Jersey. Uh, I've, been to the, I've been to the same gym she's trained at. You know, she is, she is a star on the rise in my part of the country. And I'll tell you, I, I made the god-awful mistake of putting way too much money on Jessica Andrade the last time they fought. And I said right then and there, I'm never betting against Aaron Blanchfield again. Like, you know, I, I saw this man on Faro being being you know the 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 underdog that she is, and it's like I I don't see it because she has she's she's done everything you can do. Athlete, she beat Caitlin Chikagian, who was like the 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 consensus always the number one ranked, right below Valentina, the top gatekeeper, turned everyone else away. Beat her d- done and dusted, no problem. Rose Nama Yunus in France, no problem. Uh, but there's something about this Aaron Blanchfield girl where it's like if she gets a hold of you, she's getting you down and she will submit you. And it's a little one dimensional, but man, it's effective. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's hard to disagree. Other than her last fight against Tyler Santos, she did struggle to get her down. She did win, but I do think she will learn a lot in that battle. Anyway, best of luck. As I say, it's a good fight card though this weekend. But Chris Wyman, I'm very, very much looking forward to that. He's 39 years old. That's where I was going. He's 39. It's not just a leg breaks. It's not the fact that he snapped a leg, fractured the other leg. You know, he's been struggling to get the wins because he's fighting top of the food chain. He's, the body's falling apart. His neck's hurting him. His legs are bloody falling apart. And he's almost 40. You know what I'm saying? So best of luck to him this weekend. But I do think if he loses, and I don't know if he does, I think he might win. You know, who knows? Um, It could be the last time we ever see Chris Wyman, which would be the end of an era. You know, kind of like my, he's going to be one of the last ones from my era. You know, I'm talking Rockhold, Anderson Silva, Gegard Mousasi, myself. Who else was there? Jack Array. Jack Array, you know. Yoel. Yoel Romero. Well, saying that, well, Whitaker came in at the tail end. You know. Yeah, I mean, there was a time where you and Whitaker were, were, were maybe going to fight, but I still consider Whitaker like the very start of that next generation. Like Correct. he's the old head in the Izzy generation, you know? Whitaker's still only in like 31, 32, I think. Anyway, uh, Harrington, I'm just looking at the notes here, and I'm curious. I am mm-hmm. curious by this. The British Museum is suing mm-hmm. a former curator for allegedly stealing over 1,800 artifacts from the museum to sell online. Uh, yeah, exactly that. He was a curator who was, you know, in, in charge of these exhibits at the museum. And they say over the course of many years, he was just grabbing little things, just pocketed stuff, some gems, some priceless ancient artifacts, and then just throwing them on eBay, <laughs> just hoping for the best. That's, yeah, so basically... The British Museum. The, uh, he was just stealing. Uh-huh. 
Okay. <laughs> it was just I mean, you've got to wait for a while. I mean, I guess if it's just little tiny ones, like if you go in the Natural History Museum, they've got a whole section on gems and stuff like that, like in glass cases. You know, little, one, one here, two. one there. That's not quite the story I thought it was going to be, but oh well, I'll let you off. But uh, they, thieving little bastard. They uh, have recovered 358 of the 1,800 items. So, oh, they did. Cool. Yeah. Well. Dude, this, if you uh, if you bought a thing off eBay, let's say you just bought some sapphire, still only fourteen hundred and forty two <laughs> left yeah. to recover. So the, the, you know, percentage wise, they haven't done too well. How no. pissed are you if you're one of those dudes who bought that on eBay? You're like, oh, here's a mummy toe, and they spend like ten grand on it, and the cops just show up, and they're like, what? What museum was it, Harrison? Uh, it's just called the British Museum. Okay, all right. It's like the big museum. Yeah, seems yeah. like it. I don't know. I've been to you know, you know me. I'm always frequenting museums. I'm it's probably Dave uh, on the uh, uh, gem section. <laughs> oh yeah, it is it is gem section, Dave. Uh um, <laughs> gem section Dave, the little bastard. Uh it's in Bloomsbury. Oh it's yeah, no, I've been to that, yeah. yeah. That's uh where is it? That's uh Trafalgar Square, I do believe. Uh anyway, let's do one more. Is there any other big stories we've got to get to? Short to show today, everybody. As you can see, I'm in a hotel room. Uh, but uh, so that's just... oh what? no 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 yeah we'll we'll talk about that in a second. All right, today's episode is sponsored by Prize Picks, which is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America, and they are the easiest and the most exciting way to play DFS daily fantasy sports. It's just you against the numbers; you just pick more or less, and you can up to twenty five x your money. Um, and listen. This weekend, basketball. We've got the Celtics taking on the Hawks. And this is how easy this game is to play. Derek Whitey, will he get more or less than 13.5 points? Jalen Brown, will he get more or less than 22.5 points? And DeAndre Hunter, will he get more or less than four rebounds? As I say, it really is that simple. Price picks is really, really simple to play. As I said, there is quick withdrawals, there is easy gameplay, an enormous selection of plays and stat types of what make price picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. So as I say, you can up to 25x your money with price picks. So give it a shot. It really is that easy. More or less, it's fun, it's easy, it's simple, and we've got a great offer for you. Go to pricepicks.com slash believe use the code believe and you will get a deposit match of up to one hundred dollars prizepicks.com slash believe the code is believe for the first deposit match of up to one hundred dollars more or less that's it more or less it's that easy prizepicks.com slash believe this was hilarious number six this was hilarious we've got to play the video so dana white uh, sitting down doing a bunch of podcasts this week, speaking with uh, TNT Sports' Adam Catchell, of course. Yep. And then he sat down with, apparently she was a former ESPN reporter, Sage Steele. That's what we did. Last question. What's Joe Rogan's dream? What's Joe Rogan's dream? Joe Rogan, Dana White. <laughs> What's Dana White's dream? Did you just think I that totally was Joe did. Rogan? I totally did. She just called me Joe Rogan. You thought it was Joe Rogan? Yeah, I thought you were Joe I was Rogan. bald no. before Joe was ever I know, bald. Okay? I know. Listen to me. Joe Rogan and Dana White are literally the only two. So listen to this. People I will be. That I have the. Wait, let me finish. I have the <laughs> respect for because of how you freaking stood up and support others. So Thank forgive you. that. But wait. So I will be walking right. down the. Sh okay, okay. Um, first of all, why have they got no shoes on? It's probably in her living room. You can't man. track in dirt to the carpet, Mike. Well, I I get a I kind of get annoyed when I walk in someone's house and you got to take the shoes off. All right, don't ever come to my house then. Yeah. Well, well, did you take your shoes off at my house? No, because you don't have a shoes off rule at your house. I don't have a shoes off rule at my house. You know, because <laughs> I expect most people to not be walking through dog shit and have a you know have a decent cleanliness shoe about them. Granted. You know, and we mop up, we clean, you know what I mean? If, you know, but anyway, so they've got the shoes off. I think, and I don't want to ruin the bit, I think that was staged. Yo, really? You think? You think the person who has editorial control over an insanely embarrassing moment like that couldn't have yeah, just said? Yeah, no, come on, come on. That was bullshit because she started a new podcast from uh, from what I understand, so she wanted to get some little viral bit. It's, it's doing the rounds everywhere on social media and whatnot, but 
Yeah, it's pretty funny. And I like that. It's a good idea to try and get some headlines. Yeah. You know what else is a pretty good idea? Dana White doing every podcast on earth except for Believe You Me, dude. Yeah, yeah. She well, called him Joe at the beginning of the interview, too. Oh, did she really? Yeah, she, she thought he was Joe Rogan. Ah, uh, you never know. Maybe she was nervous. Bless her. Bless her. Uh, I was going to say a second ago. So it looks like Karate Combat are heading to Dubai and Luke Rockhold will be getting back in the ring once again, taking on Joe Schilling. Um, I'm not sure how old Joe is or Luke. Um, fair play to both of them. Fair play to Karate Combat. They're doing big things. I mean, that's that's cool that they're taking it out to Dubai. I'm sure they're all getting paid very, very handsomely for that as well. But Luke Rocco, Joe Schilling, I think that's got all the makings to be a good fight. I mean, Luke is definitely, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? He's catered to that style of fighting. He's tall, he's a great kickboxer, he's good, good, good jiu-jitsu and stuff like that as well. But fair play to him getting back in there and having another go. How old is Joe? Did you look it up? Uh, Joe Schilling is 40, Luke Rockhold is 39. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Luke's still a young man. Mm -hmm. Still a young man, the bastard. <laughs> Son of well, a bitch. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's going to be a super fun fight. I, uh, you know, I, it's, it's nice to see Joe Schilling in the news for something other than beating up unruly people at a bar. You know, like, let's, let's get him back fighting in the octagon. Yeah. And did <laughs> we speak about Brandon Moreno on Monday? Uh, no, we did not. Yeah. Go on then. Set the scene. Uh, so Brandon Moreno said that he just needs to take some time off. Uh, he's not training. He's not going to be booking any fights. He said he's not retiring, uh, but he needs a break to just recover mentally and physically. Yeah. Um, and I understand that. I understand him wanting to take a break, you know, but uh, he, he, we, we see this a lot, and, and I'm trying to choose my words very carefully. I mean, he's had an unbelievable career. The man's been a champion. So he, he, he should try and look at it as a position of gratefulness. You know what I mean? Because he's in a position that a lot of people are killing to be in. You know, yes, he lost to Pantoja and then he lost to Roy Val. You know, but this is professional sports at the highest level. It's going to be taxing. It's going to be stressful. It's going to be tough to maintain the discipline. Do you know, you know what I'm saying? You know, I mean, yeah, granted, take a bit of time off and all the rest of it. And I hope he comes back bigger, better, stronger, rejuvenated, hungry, you know. But there's a lot of people on the prelims that that that, that are fighting just to keep their contract. A lot of people that want to be in a title fight, you know what I'm saying? So he, he smashed it. He's made tons of money. He's got the the fame and the respect of the worldwide community. Uh, and, 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 and I understand him wanting to take a break, but just don't sit on the sidelines too long. Yeah, I mean, I for somebody like him, I feel like he does have that cachet now, right? Like he's he's headlined multiple cards. He's 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 been at the top of the bill. He has worn that belt multiple times now, and the two losses that he's had back to back were both split decision, right? Whether that's bad judging or not, you know, like the the end of the day, that that's what they go down as. So he was this close to to being holding holding and then defending his title uh, uh, two more times. So you know, I I can see him wanting to take that step back. He's only thirty years old, right? And it's like, I'd, I'd much rather you take that break now uh, than, than push yourself and, and rush into a fight against the number five guy when, when you might not be ready and your body's still busted up from four fights with Davis and Figueredo then you, and you never got treatment for any of those injuries. You just kept pushing to the next fight. Mm. Take that career reset, and then you still have that window. If you take a year, year and a half off, you still have a window of three and a half years before you're 35, which everyone has agreed is the drop-off point for, for these lighter weight guys. You still have a decent chunk of time in there that you can make a second run at the belt. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying. I just, it just, and, and this isn't necessarily aimed at Brandon Moreno because it's not, but, you know, when you lose a fight, you can't just give up on your career. And I'm, I know he's not saying that he's giving up, but, you know, looking for sympathy. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like, it's a tough sport. It's And that's what it is. It's a sport. Someone wins, someone loses. When you win and you celebrate, because it's not just Moreno, we're seeing it, it's kind of a trend recently. When people start losing fights, they say, oh, man, I can't handle this. It's like, well, what are you going to do? You're going to give up? And I'm not saying Moreno is, but there's a lot of people recently when they come out, they're trying to look for people. When they lose a fight, they're looking for sympathy. You know, it's like, well, well you lost that fight. You have dished it out to many people many times. And, and you've been the cause. I'm not talking about Moreno, I'm meaning one. Um, 
you whoever it is has been the cause of people going home, beaten up, going to the hospital, losing half of their paycheck, hopes and dreams smashed to bits. But you've got to be man enough or woman enough and strong enough to keep going. I mean, you've got to remember that this is why we start this career. You know what I mean? For a lot of people, it's a lifelong journey. You start martial arts as a kid. For other people, they have a harder path, a harder entry. Sometimes the combat sports lifestyle chooses them because they didn't have many options in life, you know? Uh, listen, I wish him all the best. I do. I'm a fan of Brandon Moreno. I really am, you know, but uh, I'm not a fan. And this is, again, not aimed at him. Just people, when they lose, you know, kind of feeling sorry for themselves a little bit. You know, <laughs> you can't do that. You know, you can't. You got to give it, and you got to be able to take it. You got to be the hammer and the nail. You got to be a tough guy after a win or a loss. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So anyway, I'm not saying anything bad about him. Brandon's an incredible fighter. Um, anything else before we do a quick question or two? So there's a there's a bit of a tie into that actually. Uh, so Max Holloway uh, said that the reason that he accepted the Justin Gaethje fight is because he didn't want to wait on the sidelines. He said he knew. If Ilya beat uh, Volkanovsky, no matter how dominant of a victory it was for Ilya, it was the title was probably going to be held up in an immediate rematch type of thing. And Holloway said, at that point then, I'm on the sidelines for a year. This game doesn't wait for anyone. It will pass you by. I need to take this fight instead and make my own opportunities. And that's you got to respect Max Holloway for that. I mean, that's phenomenal to hear because he's absolutely right. You know, how many times have we seen this happen where people sit out on the sidelines waiting for this fight, waiting for what they feel they deserve, you know, and, and, and sometimes people do deserve what's coming to them. Sometimes, you know, they, they are justified in thinking I'm going to wait this one out, but you never know what's going to happen. And he's absolutely right. Hollow, uh, sorry, Volkanovsky and Taporia are going to do a rematch, you know, and who knows if, if Volkanovsky wins that, then they're definitely going to do a rubber match. So in the whole time, Support uh, sorry, uh, Holloway, pardon me, is sitting on the sidelines doing nothing, wasting his time, wasting his prime, not making money, twiddling his thumbs. What's some other examples of where people have sat out on the sidelines? I mean, Tyron Woodley sat out for like two years and got a title shot off of it. Colby just did the same thing. Yeah. Um, trying to think uh, of ones uh, where it didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for ones where it didn't work out. I mean, there was, there was one recently with the middleweight division. Who was that? Uh, Izzy. I mean, Izzy. Something to do with Izzy and Strickland and and Drickus. I don't know which one did it, but there was one there. Anyway, anyway, whatever. Oh, Drickus passed up the the quick turnaround. Strickland got it, and Strickland oh, went that, and won the title. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So anyway, whatever. The sport moves on with or without you. Generally, you want it to be with you. You mm -hmm. want to be a part of it. You want to be a part of the show. And you want to keep making money. Anyway, that's it. Uh, we're going to do some questions now, which is our favorite part of the show. If you have a question about anything, don't make it about MMA. Non-MMA is better. Send it in to bympod at gmail.com. If you're listening on Spotify or wherever you find podcasts, make sure to subscribe. Leave us a five-star rating. Positive review it really helps out on those platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and you hit that notification bell to find out whenever a new episode drops. And if you want to catch over 500 episodes, you can't find anywhere else completely ad-free, totally uncensored, head to gasdigital.com. Use the promo code BYM14. Get a two-week free trial. Check out over 20 great shows on the network. All right, so the first one today, <clears throat> not so much a question, but it is more of a request from Roland Vixen. Oh, nice. Hello. <laughs> this is Roland Vixer. From Germany, Mike. I'm very disappointed. You recently apologized for saying something so beautiful that you should be saying it at least once every episode. And you say it like once every month now and you apologize? That's crazy. Please start saying it again at least once every episode. And by it, <laughs> I mean three magical words. No, man. Alive. <laughs> <laughs> no man alive should be recording a message into the phone looking so creepy. Roland Victor. Oh, Jesus Christ. No, I know. I did I did go a bit of a on a bit of a mental no man alive mission, tirade, wave, whatever you want to call it, for quite some time. I'm like, I gotta rein this in, but it just it just uh I don't know, became a habit. We're bringing it back. 
We're bringing it back. I'm bringing out No Man Alive merch. I am actually. I'm working on it. I'm gonna- <laughs> We're so <laughs> gonna get sued by oh, John Fury. Yeah, dude, you're 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 <laughs> the next victim up for Gypsy Why? John. No man alive can sue. No man alive can sue anyone, right? For saying those words, unless he's trademarked it, which I don't think he has. But you know what I mean? No, nah, dude, he he Gypsy trademarked it. He said it at a press conference. That means he can fight you if you use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, John Fury's been kind of quiet lately. I, I'm, I'm sad. I'm sad. I saw him with Anthony Joshua. He was super polite and respectful. They had a really nice interaction, you know, before and after. Uh, I like the crazy John Fury. Granted, I've said it before, if it was my dad, I'd be reining it in. But Tyson doesn't care. John doesn't care. It's, it's comedy gold. It's brilliant. I love it. What about the 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 Callum Wall, uh not Callum Wall, Who was the 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 guy? The British boxer he was trying to fight. Oh, uh, Carl Froch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carl Froch. I don't know why I said Froch. That's what dickheads say. Uh, yeah, Carl Froch. In fact, Carl Froch. Uh, I've had a request uh, to to do a little uh, team up. Get, people keep telling uh, telling me we should get him on the show. Yeah, well, I will. Do. I'll reach out to him because uh, Daz Morris, my mate, reached out and sent me his number as well. I've just been traveling and doing a million different things i actually commented on his youtube channel and said uh yeah let's let, let, let's do something so uh stay tuned we'll get Carl frock on the show and uh you know i just w- maybe when it comes to uh and uh, sorry fury versus usik that'd be a good time to have him on but anyway thanks for the question roland victor you absolute mental patient brian <laughs> <laughs> all right so next question we have here is from angry dad and pump hey believers my name's pumpkin so you believe achieve okay uh duncan here aka purest dad music uh had a few interactions with harrison on social media thanks for that um so following soundcloud and twitter uh so i had a couple of questions uh first one is um chase hooper mentioned a while ago about uh maybe having the uh, fighters miss weight have a point deducted at the start of their fight it might make things a bit interesting and your thoughts on that and other than that, just, uh, about a year ago, I was living in the Kingdom of Jordan, probably your only believer there. So um, I'm interested in the translators, maybe their stories, like Fabiano. Uh, I think translators are psychic for him. He's like in the travel industry by day. So be interested to hear their sides of the story and maybe the cut men too, how they came to be cut men, what qualifications they need. Uh, other than that, me and Pumpkin, let's say goodbye. Hit my Pumpkin. Now don't look at me. <laughs> get a grip pumpkin get a grip uh right you kind of lost me there so hold on what what was the initial question it was good um yeah dude oh uh, what about fighters who missing oh, who miss yeah. weight should they lose a point in the fight yeah yeah uh, yeah that that's why I, i'll answer that bit the other part about the kingdom of jordan and the translators and cut men and how did they become cut men and all the rest of it i'm not a cut man i'm not a translator <laughs> ask a cut man Ask a translator. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm I too busy. Suggesting that we get Fabiano on the show. Oh, and okay. just tell I'm... stories about translating. Oh, I see. That's actually not a bad idea. I'll get him on. Fabiano, by the way, he's the smooth guy that does the translations. Oh, yeah. He's brilliant. He's the best interpreter translator in the game because he doesn't just translate it with the words. You know, some people just say you you hear it sometimes. I don't know. Mm-hmm. They got some good ones in the UFC, but you hear it sometimes. It's just so monotone and robotic, you know. I am. He does it with the energy and the passion and the question marks and whatever, you know. He translates it perfectly, you know. He is by far the best. Yeah, that's a good idea. He's got a good personality as well. He's a good dude and Cutman Tate as well. We've got to get Cutman Tate on. Uh, point off for missing weight. I'm sorry, buddy. What was the kid called? Gin- uh, the cat called Ginger. Uh, again, pepper? Jordan, Jordan, I think. No, he wasn't. It was ginger no? or pepper. I okay. think anyway. Uh, you and the cat can piss off. That's a stupid rule, right? If you agree to fight, you agree to fight. You can't take a point off for missing weight. I understand there should be a punishment. The punishment is a financial punishment. Um, I don't believe because Dominic Cruz feels very differently about this. Dominic Cruz believes that people miss weight on purpose to give themselves an advantage so that they haven't killed themselves in the sauna. They'll be stronger and all the rest of it, and they're not going to fade as the fight progresses. 
maybe I'm naive, which a lot of people on here say I am, right? But I just cannot believe that a fighter would purposely go, you know what? I'm not doing these last two pounds because what I'm going to do is I'm going to get fined 20%. I don't care about that because then it guarantees my win bonus. I don't get a win. And as long as I keep winning, that's more important. I just don't, I can't imagine any real man that is brave enough to step in an octagon and fight at the highest level would be that much of a coward and that much of a pussy to not even try. I genuinely believe that when people miss weight, it's because they've been lazy throughout the training camp. They've been too, um, what's the word, reliant on their nutritionist. They haven't been as, they haven't held themselves accountable. They haven't monitored their weight. And they ultimately haven't been as, as strict with their diet as they needed to be. Because you fall into a trap, you're like, okay, all right, well, it's not coming down as quick. I'll be good. I'll be good. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. All right, well, then it becomes, well, this weight cut's going to suck. I've done it before. I did it 10 years ago. I'll be able to do it again. And then they mess up. You know, I, I really don't believe that people do it on purpose. Brian, what stat are you going to tell me? So uh, when, at the time of this article's printing, I'm not sure when it was, but it couldn't have been too long ago. In 2000, since 2013, 109 fighters have fought overweight and they carry a record of 51 wins and 58 losses. So statistically, it does not help. Really? Because I was always under the impression that it was the other way around, that statistically they went on to win. But regardless, uh, it's close. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. I've got a cold. Oh, don't you just hate that? Yeah, okay. <laughs> don't you just hate that uh -huh. i hate that feeling i was looking forward to a big sneeze just blue ball to sneeze that's the worst <laughs> oh god no i've got a, i've got a cold i've got a runny nose i'm in a bad way no man alive should be doing a podcast uh um, that's atlantic city does it to you yeah they got me they got me uh yeah yeah i, I don't know but you can't take a point off i there are some cases like like uh, y'all Romero when he fought luke rockhold for the you know interim title right he came in, I think it was like three pounds over, something like that, didn't want to cut any more weight, knocked him out in the first round, give up 20% of, of that purse, sure. But the purse you're going to get for an actual title fight is going to be a lot better, no? I just disagree fundamentally. Fair enough. can't do it. If you're going to fight, you fight, and then the conditions are met beforehand. If you miss weight, you either refuse the fight or you accept the fight and you take their purse. You know what I mean? You can't then go, right, okay, well, you came in a little bit heavy, so you're going to essentially lose one round. Five minutes of your effort are going to be totally worthless. It's Okay. It's, you should have put in that extra five minutes cutting weight. Oh, I agree. I agree with that. You know what I mean? I always say fighters who miss weight should be ashamed of themselves. Always say that. I have a very, very strong stance on that. Also, at the same time, I don't believe that it should be deducting points because okay. the fight hasn't even bloody started. Anyway, I will allow one more question, Brian, and then I'm going to go away. I'm going to go try and feel better. That's very gracious of you, Mike. I'll, I'll allow it. Our next question here is from oh, Mr. Logan Ford. What up, BYM Pod? My name is Logan. I'm coming out of uh, the area of San Antonio, Texas. Um, first off, I want to say, I'll try to make it quick. First off, I want to say, Michael, uh, you're my favorite UFC fighter of all time. You're a badass. Um, love everything you've done. Love everything you do for the sport. Uh, just keep doing what you're doing, man. I really, it, big fan, big fan. Um, but a, a while back when Kamara lost his fight, Kamara Usman lost his fight to Leon Edwards. He went on the JRE podcast right after that, and he talked about losing in front of his daughter. And one thing that he said that uh, really kind of struck me and, and I thought was really interesting was he said that he found it almost important to for his daughter to see him lose so she can see him come back from that and overcome that and uh, become a better fighter a better person so on so forth i just want to get you guys' thoughts on that see what y'all think about that and um you know what how do you how did you teach your kids off of your losses or you know how, what was your train of thought on that so let me know thanks guys well thank you logan for those kind words i really do appreciate that um and that's a good question because it's always such a cliche. Fighters say it all the time. And I think I've even said it. I'm guilty of saying this. 
no man alive will beat me in front of my children. Simple as that. You know what I mean? When my wife and kids came, Rebecca, Callum and Ellie came along, I'm like, yeah, there's just no way I'm going to lose. I'm not losing in front of them. But that's kind of out of your control. You're always going to do your best. And granted, if you think your children are there, you might draw up some mythical powers like something from a movie where you, you harness this extra special 10%. But there's no fairy. There's no angel. There's no script writer. It's not a script. It's not a movie. It's real life. And if you get clipped with a good shot, if you get a shin-on-chin headshot dead like Kamaru landed, uh, Leon landed on Kamaru, it doesn't matter all the will in the world. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? That's not factored into the equation. Um, we all say that, but it is important. And I, I like what Kamaru said because, you know, my family, my children have seen me lose. My wife has seen me knocked out. You know, kids have seen me lose as well. Uh, and it is a valuable lesson for them to learn. And more importantly, it's how you come back because you can't give up on yourself. You know, but I think most people are more inspired and more motivated when they see somebody do that. Somebody pick themselves up and dust themselves off and get on with it, you know, and just say, all right, well, f it. I didn't do it. I'm going to try again. And that's what I would always say. I've said this before, so I apologize for repeating myself. But every fight, when, especially when Callum was younger, um, he was always very nervous for me, you know, and I'd always call him from the dressing room every single time. I'm talking back when he was like 10 years old, you know, maybe even younger, five, six, seven, whatever. And uh, he, he said a couple of times, you promised me you're going to win, Dad. And I always said, I can't promise I'm going to win, Dad. Uh, sorry, Dad. I can't promise I'm going to win, son. I can't. I said, but I'll tell you what I am going to do. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to try my best. As long as I do my best, then that's all I can do, you know? And if the man beats me, then fair play. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to go out there and give it everything I got. I said, if I do lose, don't feel sad. At least I try my best. You know, now that sounds like a defeatist attitude. It's not. It's just setting realistic expectations. You can't sit there to a young kid that's seven years old and go, oh, yeah, don't you worry. Don't you worry. I'm going to knock this guy out. Then you go out there. It's UFC 100 and you get flatlined into oblivion. Do you know what I mean? But that is life. That's that's what happens sometimes. So, yeah, fair play to Kamaru. Uh, has he won since? I don't think he has, has he? Bless him. So is the rebound mate journey is still on. Kamaru's going to jump on the show soon, by the way. Nice. That's exciting. Yeah. Looking forward to that. I don't think um, he needs to. Though. He's got every bloody guest on the planet joining him. He's got everyone. So, uh, but yeah. Anyway, that's it. That's the show. Thank you all for watching. Monday, Anthony and I will be back. I think we've got a couple of guests as well. So make sure you tune in for that one. In the meantime, enjoy the fights this weekend. See you then.